Hey everyone, and welcome to another video here at Whiteboard Doctor. Thanks for joining us today. Quick disclaimer before we move on, none of these videos are intended to be acted upon as medical advice. Please pause the video here and read the disclaimer in its entirety before moving on. Channel plug, here at Whiteboard Doctor, our mission is to bring you interesting, relevant, and understandable medical education for all types of lifelong learners, trainees, and practitioners. If you want to follow along, we do have a lovely subscribe button in the bottom right-hand corner of all the videos. Don't forget to hit that like button. And lastly, if you'd like to support us outside of viewing our videos, we have several ways in which you can do that linked in the video description and pinned comment. Stay well, keep learning, and back to the video. All right, and welcome back to another video. Today, we're going to be talking about Omicron symptoms, um, specifically a few that have come up as, you know, what's being titled as unexpected ones, although uh, we feel like maybe a better phrase would be less expected, um, because after all, they are consistent with having a viral infection, just maybe less expected compared to the symptoms we typically have with COVID. So this is an update video. We put out a video on Omicron symptoms, um, a kind of deeper dive on just the general, most prevalent Omicron symptoms, how those symptoms differ from kind of quote unquote typical COVID or the symptoms of COVID that the previous variants caused in the other waves. Um, today we're going to be talking about a few, you know, less expected Omicron symptoms that have been popping up frequently in some of the news media. Um, a lot of them are anecdotal and we'll get into that. So the first thing we wanted to talk about was um, the ZOE, Z-O-E. And um, this is a we believe it's out of the UK. Um, the Zoe COVID study is essentially where you can self-report your symptoms. And the most common symptoms with Omicron being self-reported are seen here. And that's what we wrote here. So we just kind of wanted to establish kind of the most self-reported symptoms, a brief overview of how that differs from typical COVID. So the most common five self-reported symptoms seen in the Zoe self-reporting study for Omicron are congestion, headaches, sneezing, sore throat, and cough. Things to note here are that there's a lot less reporting in Omicron of loss of taste and smell. It's still something that some are experiencing just a lot fewer than was seen with previous COVID variants. In addition to that, there's less fevers being reported. A lot of these you can see are kind of more upper respiratory tract symptoms, such as congestion, sneezing, sore throat. And that's kind of mixed with kind of a viral syndrome or a flu-like syndrome where you get headaches, muscle aches, that type of thing. There's less of those loss of taste, loss of smell, fevers, you know, shortness of breath, all of that. It's more of this upper respiratory tract syndrome with some viral syndrome. All right. So these are the most common symptoms being reported in that other Omicron symptoms original video. We went into a few other studies that looked at um, some of the more common Omicron symptoms beyond the Zoe study. So definitely check out that video if interested. Um, in this video, though, we're going to be talking about some of these atypical symptoms that are starting to be reported. So there's growing anecdotal, meaning, you know, self-reported reports of several other atypical symptoms that people are experiencing with Omicron as compared to previous variants of COVID-19. The first one that's kind of taking the media by storm is night sweats. You know, for instance, we just Google searched and typed in night sweats, and you can see, so Omicron night sweats, all these results, over 5 million results, and that's, you know, Fox News, Fortune, Sun, NJ.com, all these things are reporting, you know, night sweats, unique symptoms of Omicron, night sweats. Um, Omicron infections are showing a very strange symptom, night sweats. So what are night sweats? Night sweats are these drenching sweats at night that, you know, are so soaking through that you sometimes have to get up, change your clothes, change your sheets. They're kind of overwhelming drenching sweats that you get for no other real reason, right? This isn't that you're febrile and get sweats. This is you're not febrile, you wake up from sleep and you're just drenched in sweat. We obviously, for those who have been following the channel, consider ourselves an evidence-based channel, and we do have to say that there's no Omicron study 
out there that has shown, you know, the prevalence of night sweats in those with Omicron. This is all anecdotal reporting that a lot of people kind of are uh, self-reporting this. And because of that, it's been kind of taking over a lot of these news outlets. Um, transparently, uh, we came out with a series, uh, I had Omicron, I being me, and there's three videos on my experience with Omicron. We're actually going to, I'm going to come out with an update video because I, I have redeveloped some symptoms that I wanted to tell you all about. But, um, I transparently, during the two days that I was feeling, you know, more sick with Omicron, did have drenching night sweats that were waking me up from sleep. So anecdotally, I had these as well. When we actually looked at previous variants of COVID-19, um, previous SARS-CoV-2 variants that caused COVID-19, we found that night sweats were not very common um, previous to Omicron, as low as 2 to 3% self-reported night sweats. When we went to this CDC study on the most prevalent COVID-19 symptoms. You can see here, this is just 164 patients, so a smaller study, um, but they looked at all the symptomatology and they found night sweats was fairly rare. You know, this is percent that reported it. Um, this is in pediatric patients, and then this is non-hospitalized adults and hospitalized adults, and very few patients reported night sweats, you know, just kind of that maybe two to 5% mark. So the Big growth of self-reported night sweats does seem to be somewhat specific to Omicron, but again, it's all anecdotally reported. Us included, though, I did have these. Another symptom being commonly reported with Omicron is kind of red eyes. We'd call this conjunctival injection or conjunctival erythema. The conjunctiva is the white of the eyes, and when it turns red, you call it conjunctival injection or erythema. And this, again, is being anecdotally reported um, for many individuals with Omicron. And if you think about Omicron, we've talked about this, Omicron seems to affect kind of the upper respiratory tract more than Delta and the other variants did. Those seem to go deeper into the lungs, whereas this seemed to stay in kind of the upper respiratory tract, the nasopharynx. We covered a study where they found that Omicron replicated crazy fast in the nasopharynx compared to Delta. And it's curious, you know, that potentially we're seeing a higher incidence of this conjunctival injection or red eyes, which is kind of typical of an upper respiratory virus that causes, you know, congestion, red eyes, sore throat, all that kind of thing. Because we highlighted up here in the Zoe study this sore throat, because sore throat is being another, uh, is another persistent, you know, symptom that those are reporting um, who have Omicron as compared to Delta. We did just want to give some background. So this is another study by um, Catherine Hu and uh, additional authors, Ophthalmic Manifestations of Coronavirus. You can see, again, we'll link all these in the video description. This is it here. And it's one of many studies that looks at ocular manifestations. This is of COVID. So this is before Omicron. And Although many more are reporting red eyes with Omicron, at least anecdotally, you can see that actually ocular involvement or involvement of the eyes in a meta-analysis in 2021 of over 7,300 patients with COVID showed that about 11% reported eye involvement. And most frequently that eye involvement was conjunctiv conjunctivitis or that conjunctival injection, that redness of the white of the eyes. You know, so 88% of those that reported eye involvement and 11% reported eye involvement reported conjunctivitis. So after that, it was foreign body sensations in the eyes, eye redness, um, which, you know, isn't necessarily always conjunctivitis, although conjunctivitis often has eye redness, um, just tearing, itching of the eyes, etc., etc. So although we're hearing more about this red eyes in Omicron, a number of people with COVID before Omicron also reported it, but it could have to do with, you know, that upper respiratory tract focus, which we covered a few videos on this, again, linked in the video description, so check those out, about how Omicron replicates crazy fast in the upper airways and upper respiratory tract compared to Delta. The other two symptoms that are being reported as kind of unique to Omicron are muscle aches and fatigue. Um, we actually had both of these fairly significant, uh, I should say I had both of these fairly significantly, especially upper back muscle aches. And again, we're hearing a lot about how these are specific to Omicron, but when we actually go back and look at COVID before Omicron, a big number, almost 60% of patients reported muscle aches and fatigue when you had they had COVID before Omicron. Again, if we flop back to here, you can see that instead of night sweats, if we look at 
where do we go here? Oh, they're even higher up. Here we go. Myalgias, which are muscle aches, almost 60% report that. And then fatigue is right down here. Again, almost 60%. So we are seeing this a lot in Omicron, but we saw it a lot in COVID in general too. Um, the more interesting ones seem to be night sweats and maybe red eyes as well, but particularly night sweats. Because I had Omicron, uh, I'm going to reflect it back on kind of my own experience. And for me, the most notable symptoms I had were these really bad headaches. Um, in fact, I'm still getting some intermittent headaches, and I'm not someone who has typically gotten headaches, so that's unusual for me. And again, I'll come out with a video on that. Um, really bad fatigue, just exhausted, and then really bad upper back aches. So these were my kind of most notable symptoms. I did have sore throat, a cough, and the cough has actually come back too, which again, I'll cover in a future video. Um, I had a sore throat, a cough, congestion, all that, uh, fevers for a day or two, but really headaches, fatigue and upper back aches were my, my most prevalent symptoms. But we wanted to kind of cover Omicron symptom updates, um, particularly a lot of what kind of is flooding the news outlets, which are these night sweats, red eyes, muscle aches, and fatigue, so you knew what to look out for. Um, a lot of this may be related to the fact that Omicron is attacking the upper airways and upper respiratory tract more than Delta did, um, which more Delta penetrated more so into the lungs. And we kind of see this upper respiratory tract and viral syndrome um, pathology and symptomatology um, as compared to previous variants. So that's what we had for you today. Let us know what thoughts, comments, questions you have down below. Share your experience with us, what symptoms you've been struggling with. Uh, we'd be interested to hear. Uh, I'll be coming out with a future video update on how I'm doing and some of my recurrence of symptoms. And otherwise, uh, subscribe, hit that bell button, check out our other Omicron videos linked in this video's description. Tons of content there. Uh, stay well, keep learning, and we'll see you all next time.